Movie begin in the cornfields of a small Midwestern town. Every Halloween, a creature known as Sawtooth Jack awakens, and its mission is to reach the local church. The townsfolk are well aware that they must stop this creature to prevent disaster, and they have a traditional ritual known as the run that they perform every year. During the run, all the town's teenage boys are tasked with pursuing Sawtooth Jack and eliminating him before midnight. The incentive for success is enticing, the one who kills Sawtooth Jack is hailed as a hero and rewarded with a house for their family, $25,000, a car, and permission to leave town, a privilege typically denied to residents. Additionally, they believe this ritual blesses the harvest. Notably, girls are not allowed to participate in the run, and each family can only send one son. In 1962, a group of masked boys embarks on their mission to hunt down the monster. One of them stands alone on the road, overwhelmed by fear and uncertainty about what lies ahead. Suddenly, Sawtooth Jack appears behind him, and the boy's piercing scream is silenced as he is brutally killed. Moments later, the boys stumble upon the burning remains of their friend and spot Sawtooth Jack lurking in the middle of the cornfield. Jim, fueled by anger and determination, immediately begins chasing after the monstrous creature. When Sawtooth Jack is on the verge of reaching the church, Jim catches up to him and engages in a fierce and deadly battle. Ultimately, Jim emerges victorious, beating the creature to death. The others join in, extracting candy from Jack's gruesome body. They howl with jubilation and celebrate Jim's triumph. Following this, the Harvester's Guild hosts a Halloween party to commemorate another successful run, and Jim is awarded all of his prizes. Jim's younger brother, Richie, pleads with him to take him along, but Jim can only offer a hug and an I love you before departing town in his brand new car. There ain't no stop signs on the black road! A year later, Sheriff Jerry makes an appearance at the school five days prior to Halloween to emphasize the importance of the run. He showcases pictures from the year when Sawtooth Jack was not defeated and the town's crops suffered dire consequences. Jim is frequently held up as a hero, a fact that deeply frustrates Richie, who longs to partake in the run but is prohibited by the rules. Riley mocks Richie for wanting to volunteer when the other boys have no choice but to participate. Some of the teens doubt the existence of Sawtooth Jack, believing it to be an adult in disguise, but Bud insists he saw the creature outside his window when he was a child. Riley continues to taunt Richie, leading to a brawl that is swiftly broken up by adults. After school, Riley attempts to follow Richie down the street to resume the fight, prompting Richie to seek refuge inside a movie theater. There, he encounters Kelly, a newcomer to town. They strike up a conversation and quickly hit it off. However, when Richie invites her to the Halloween dance, Kelly explains that she is not allowed to attend due to racial discrimination. Richie promises to change this rule when he wins this year's run. He then reunites with his best friends, Bud and Mitch, who have heard troubling rumors about Kelly. Richie, however, chooses to dismiss these rumors. His friends also encourage him to break the rules and participate in the run, asserting that he is faster than his brother. In the evening, Richie returns home, and his parents, Dan and Donna, present him with a postcard from Jim, who has been absent since winning the run. Richie informs his parents of his intention to participate in the run, defying the established rules. A heated argument ensues, during which Dan slaps his own son. This only fuels Richie's determination, and he declares that they cannot stop him. He escapes through his bedroom window and meets with Jim's former partner for a night of smoking. Meanwhile, in the cornfields, the farmer approaches an empty scarecrow stand and proceeds to carve a pumpkin. He then ascends the stand, which is no longer vacant. Sawtooth Jack now stands there, donning the pumpkin as a head. The next day, Riley confronts Richie and assaults him, stealing his belt in the process. This belt holds sentimental value to Richie as he and Jim used to wear matching ones. Enraged, Richie attempts to defend himself with a knife, but Riley overpowers him once again and departs. Richie returns home to find a letter from his brother in the mail. Jim apologizes for his long absence and implores Richie not to join the run as their parents need him. Frustrated with being treated like a child, Richie resolves to steal a car and leave town. However, as soon as he reaches the open road and crosses a bridge, Sheriff Jerry blocks his path. Richie tries to flee but is quickly subdued by Jerry. That night, all the parents lock their children in their rooms, preventing them from running away or avoiding the run. The boys pound on doors and walls in desperation, pleading for food and bathroom breaks, but their pleas fall on deaf ears. They must endure three days of isolation, a tactic designed to drive them to the brink of madness, and stoke their hunger for the run. When Halloween night finally arrives, the farmer loads Sawtooth Jack with candy and releases him by cutting his ropes. In town, all the teenage boys are finally set free to roam the streets and commence the run. Richie awakens in his bedroom, where Dan attempts to convince him of a promising job opportunity for his future. 
However, Richie's heart is set on the run, and both Dan and Donna's pleas go unheeded as Richie departs from the house. Elsewhere, Bart, Charlie, and Mitch use the truck to gain an advantage in the run. Accusations of cheating from some boys are quickly quelled by Mitch's intimidation tactics. Richie eventually joins them, but before they can depart, the antagonistic group returns and damages their truck. Once again, Mitch manages to hold them at bay while Richie distracts them with food, allowing the boys to make their escape. On the way out of town, they don masks and notice the butcher guarding the path, deterring hungry boys with a weapon in hand. Other boys also pelt the truck with objects, perceiving it as cheating. Upon reaching the cornfields, most of the group is excited, except for Bud, who remains terrified due to his childhood encounter with Sawtooth Jack outside his window. He is reluctant to participate. Suddenly, the truck collides with an object on the road, forcing Mitch to stop to avoid a collision. The truck refuses to restart, and as they investigate, they discover the road is empty. They notice candy near the cornfield and eagerly begin consuming it, assuming that the truck had struck Sawtooth Jack and they had already killed the creature. However, a noise startles them, and they realize Sawtooth Jack is waiting in the middle of the field. In a matter of seconds, the monstrous entity claims the lives of Charlie and Bud. Mitch is killed when he attempts to search for the bodies, and afterwards, Sawtooth Jack roars at Richie, causing him to flee. He doesn't stop until he stumbles upon an empty stand and is shocked to find Kelly there, breaking the rules just like him. To Richie's surprise they also spot Bud running by. It turns out Bud had only been pretending to be dead to escape, and he rushes back to town. However, when he tries to enter his own house, his parents refuse to let him in, urging him to be a man because they need the money. While pondering his next move, Bud is suddenly approached by Sawtooth Jack, prompting him to run until he finds a shelter where some boys are hiding. The teens at the shelter want to charge Bud actual cash to let him in, but Bud doesn't have any on him at the moment. Despite the protests, one boy opens the door when they hear lots of yelling, only to discover Sawtooth Jack brutally killing Bud. Nearby, a child screams as he witnesses Sawtooth Jack enter the shelter and massacre all the teens, resulting in a horrifying shower of blood. Returning to Richie and Callie, they agree to work together but realize they need better weapons. They sneak into Jerry's house to steal a gun and some beer. While there Richie is shocked to see his dad looking scared and desperately knocking on Jerry's door, but he leaves when nobody answers. Meanwhile, Dan looks for Jerry in a neighbor's house while Richie and Kelly also steal a police car. By the time Jerry comes out to confront Dan, the kids are already driving away, and he only manages to shoot a window. Richie and Kelly hear a report on the car's radio about the monster being seen downtown, so they head in that direction. Chaos reigns on the main street as teens break into stores to steal all the food they can find. The butcher tries to defend his business and even kills a few boys, but they overpower him, beat him to death, and steal his meat. Richie and Kelly are horrified by the gruesome scene, but before they can leave, they are confronted by Riley, who taunts Kelly with a racial slur. Riley's gang member grabs Kelly, but Richie finally summons the courage to stand up for himself and beats both aggressors down, threatening them with the stolen gun. Kelly seizes the opportunity to strike them with her club, and before leaving, Richie reclaims his belt. Meanwhile, the rest of the boys begin to descend into madness, even turning on each other. Sawtooth Jack soon finds a trio of boys wandering alone and launches another deadly attack. Not far from there, Richie confides in Kelly about the negative rumors he's heard about her, but she confirms that she did burn down an old man's barn because he was a racist. Richie shares that he misses his brother, who has only sent occasional postcards, and Kelly reveals that her parents are dead. Their conversation is interrupted when they hear another radio report, indicating that Sawtooth Jack has been sighted on Oak Street. Unaware that the report is fake and that Jerry is setting up a trap, Richie and Kelly head in that direction. Upon reaching Oak Street, they discover a statue covered in blood before Sawtooth Jack emerges before them. Richie attempts to approach the monster, but freezes when he notices that Jack is wearing his brother's belt. Kelly intervenes and strikes the creature with her club, but Sawtooth Jack retaliates by hitting her back before disappearing. Richie rushes to check on her. At that moment, a neighbor confronts them, threatening to shoot if they don't leave. The duo retreats to the car and encounters Jerry, who points his gun at Richie through the window. Jerry insults Kelly's parents and admits to killing them when they attempted to leave the town. Enraged, Kelly attacks Jerry, causing him to discharge his weapon, grazing the side of her head. Richie immediately pushes Jerry away, and they abandon the car to escape. Meanwhile, Sawtooth Jack arrives at Jim's old house, where he sees messages on the wall from the three days Jim had been locked in his room before the run. The sight horrifies the monster, and he sets the entire building ablaze. Not far from there, Dan meets with Jerry and expresses his reluctance to continue. Jerry berates him, explaining that the year they skipped the ritual, he lost a beloved relative. He insists that the town must be brave and do what is necessary. 
Dan is in tears but unable to defy a cop. Moments later, they arrive at Richie's home, where Donna is visibly dazed due to excessive medication. Richie begins to inquire about the past winners, discovering that they all share a similar fate. They either moved far away and cut off contact with their families or died in accidents. Growing suspicious, Richie deduces that Donna wrote the postcards and the letter, not Jim. He pleads with his mother for the truth, but Donna insists that it has to end and takes her own life. Her words confirm Richie's suspicions. The winners are not living luxurious lives but are sacrificed to allow Sawtooth Jack to return in their bodies the following year. Kelly wants to leave the town, but Richie is determined to put an end to the cycle. Downtown, panic ensues over the massive fire at Jim's old house. Riley informs Jerry that he saw Sawtooth Jack nearby, prompting Jerry to bring him into the car and hand him his gun in the hope of making him this year's winner. Richie and Kelly head to the church to await Sawtooth Jack's arrival and are surprised to find Dan inside. An argument ensues as Richie accuses his father of being a monster, but Dan reveals that parents only learn the truth when their sons win. They are then sworn to secrecy by the Jerry and Harvester's Guild, who would kill them if they attempted to leave or divulge the secret. Dan wants Richie to leave and let him handle the situation, but he breaks down upon learning of his wife's death. At that moment, the church bell begins to toll, and Sawtooth Jack appears outside. Richie rushes forward and addresses the monster as Jim, showing that he means no harm. Unfortunately, Riley arrives and shoots the creature. Kelly retaliates by attacking Riley while Richie cradles Jack in his arms. Jerry intervenes and compels Riley to try again, but after a second shot, Richie holds Riley at bay with his own gun. To Richie's shock, Sawtooth Jack grabs his hand and turns it towards himself, signaling his desire to end his suffering. Wanting the nightmare to end, Richie apologizes to his brother and pulls the trigger. The boys rush to retrieve the candy, and Jerry congratulates Richie on his success, but Richie feels only numbness. Later, during the post-event party, Richie remains in a somber mood, ignoring the jubilant atmosphere around him. However, when he sees Kelly arrive, he dances with her and kisses her, disregarding the judgmental onlookers who disapprove of their interracial relationship. Kelly discreetly hands him a gun, and they agree to run away together later. After the party, Richie departs in his new car and ignores Jim's ex-girlfriend when she pleads to go with him. There ain't no stop signs on the black road. While Richie drives away, Dan confronts Jerry, attempting to exact revenge, but Jerry overpowers him. Moments later, Richie picks up Kelly, and they start driving out of town. Soon, Jerry pursues them in the police car, prompting Richie to accelerate. However, he nearly collides with another vehicle on the road, forcing him to stop the car. Richie instructs Kelly to hide, exits the car, and walks into the cornfields at gunpoint with Jerry. Upon reaching the empty stand, Richie abruptly turns and shoots Jerry twice, ending his life. Unfortunately, the farmer appears and strikes Richie on the head, causing him to fall into the grave he had already dug. Richie draws his knife and pleads for mercy, but the farmer breaks his hand and proceeds to bury him alive. After completing the grim task, the farmer departs, revealing that he had been in the vehicle that blocked Richie's car. Once certain she is alone, Kelly emerges from hiding and is found by Dan, who advises her to seize the opportunity to leave town. Sobbing, Kelly escapes without further interruptions. A year later, the farmer exhumes Richie's body and prepares the pumpkin, which gradually becomes Richie's new sawtooth jackhead. On Halloween night, Dan arrives and frees the monster, still addressing him as Richie. When the farmer arrives, Dan kills him and instructs his monstrous son to incinerate the entire town.